First of all, gentlemen, your industries have each made headlines this year for your growth here in Ohio, either as a growth uh, sector or completely new to our state. So can you start by describing your industry on a macro sense? And the next question will get to more of the footprint in Ohio. Let's start with you, Tim. So thanks for having me today and uh, tell you a little bit about Forge Biologics. So one of the fun things that came out of the pandemic, if there was anything that came, fun that came out of the pandemic, was an increased social awareness about what gene therapy or gen genetic medicine can really do. So Forge is in that business. We make genetic medicines to help patients around the world. Um, one of the things you heard about uh, earlier today was just how so much is coming out of the research institutions r around Ohio. Forge is working with companies around the world to bring those therapies into uh, Forge to help them have them manufactured uh, to be able to go into clinical trials in patients. So, short summary. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tim. All right. Thank you for having me here today. So, I'm in the semiconductor industry. So, semiconductors might be new to the Midwest, but everybody in this room would be a part of it because you touch it and touch semiconductors. In fact, there's a fun fact that says the average person touches the uh, devices, you know, 12 hours a day. And so with everything becoming digital, um, the semiconductor industry is really important. Now, Intel itself is well known for building the laptops that you might be using, or every time you touch the cloud, the servers that are out there. But we're in the middle of a strategy change to be able to be a foundry for other people's designs. And uh, so we're going to need a lot of capacity of that, and that's why I'm here today. Great. And Robert? Uh, thank you very much. So we're in the middle of a very... Uh, a dramatic shift in the automotive industry, something that happens once every 100 years as we go from internal combustion engine to um, electric motors and batteries. So that's where uh, LG Energy Solution and Honda come in. Honda is also going through this uh, transition as well as they move toward electrification and have decided that uh, LG Energy Solution is a, is a good partner for that. So basically the industry overall is shifting. I think uh, EPA uh, made a guideline that 50% of the uh, automobiles in North America will be electric vehicles by 2030. So very much, uh, you know, the, the change is happening and we need to have uh, batteries in order to supply these uh, EVs. So there are many, many different uh, battery projects that are going on throughout the country and I can say that uh, right now I'm representing the uh, LG Honda joint venture that's based uh, pretty close to uh, Columbus. We also have another joint venture with General Motors uh, called Ultium in uh, Lordstown. So we have two major plants in Ohio, so we're very bullish in Ohio and looking forward to discussing more about what, what our uh, specific plans are. Thank you. This growth of your companies in Ohio is so exciting. So now let's take it down to more specifically. Can you share with us what's going on here, what your footprint looks like, and what your growth plans are? I'll start with Robert. Sure, thank you. So. Yeah, we're building a plant to start in uh, Jeffersonville, Ohio, which is um, a 40 gigawatt uh, plant, which is a very large uh, footprint. I described it as a uh, one kilometer by 800 meter footprint. I think uh, if you add all the, the floor space, it, add, it includes uh, 78 football fields. So it's a significant uh, undertaking, about $4 billion of investment. We'll hire some 2,500 people. and ultimately will power about half a million electric vehicles coming out of that plant. So those are the specifics and we expect, we just broke ground this year, uh, we expect to have some sample uh, production starting next year and be able to deliver batteries for commercial purposes in 2025. So that's where we are right now. Jim? Sure. Um, so I'll talk about the overall Intel uh, footprint because I came from Arizona which was the largest fab network uh, for Intel, which I'm very proud of to be in the U.S. because if you look at semiconductors, it went from a 40% in the U.S. down to in the teens. So Ohio is important because we want to expand that footprint back in the U.S. And I would, I would like to say we had zero footprint a, a year ago, but uh, one of the uh, sales uh, ladies told me, I am Ohio employee number one. So we had a couple of salespeople. So what we announced for Ohio then is the first two fabs, a $20 billion investment, the biggest investment that we've had in Ohio, but with a vision for one day having eight fabs and potentially up to a $100 billion investment. So we've uh, broken ground. We got through the first phase of the site enabling, and now we're moving on to pouring concrete. So we're well underway. I can attest to that. I go bike riding. I see it happening uh, every week out there. So it's really exciting. 
And Tim, you want to talk about the hearth? And sure. So the hearth is a 200,000 square foot facility. We broke ground in uh, late 2020, early 21. Uh, currently employing a, a little over 330 employees. Um, it's been a rapid uh, growth phase for us in Ohio as one of the, trying to help what Eddie was saying earlier about uh, helping Ohio become one of the biotech centers in the United States. So um, we do manufacturing for groups around the world, but not quite a, a hundred billion uh, investment, but uh, you know, trying to get up to that at some point. It's really exciting. So new industry growth has all kinds of implications. Supplier networks are likely to appear and eventually entire ecosystems. So as you get started or continuing to scale here in Ohio, where do you see signs of that kind of sidecar growth? And Jim, we'll start with you. Sure. So, you know, I'll break the supplier ecosystem into two. First phase, as we did the site enabling, uh, we had Gil Bain with a couple of the local contractors uh, uh, that came right out of Ohio, and we were proud to say 90% of that work happened with Ohio, uh, you know, employees. So that's good. Now, we're doing advanced manufacturing and technology, so we need our suppliers that come outside of Ohio, and that group, you know, if there's only one place to get EUV scanners, and that would be, you know, ASML. They will move part, people, part of their employees, but also a higher workforce out of Ohio. So whether it's the local companies that we're going to use through our project or whether we are going to have to bring in suppliers from outside of Ohio, in the end, Ohio is going to benefit from that overall workforce. Yeah. So. Robert? Yeah, I think uh, battery industry, clearly there's a whole value chain that comes along with it. So there are you know, core materials like cathode uh, materials, anode materials, separators, copper foil, aluminum foil. So we would expect a um, significant amount of that to be produced in let's say North America going forward. With, uh, especially with the IRA, there's uh, significant incentives to do that. So that whole uh, ecosystem will be coming to North America. I would say that there is a corridor from Michigan, Ohio, Tennessee, Georgia. This is where many of the battery plants are located, not only ours, but some of our competitors. So I would expect significant amount of, uh, you know, the ecosystem to be moving into that corridor. Ohio is very much right in there, so I think it's a matter now of uh, having the right locations, having the right situation. Governor DeWine talked a lot about people. I think uh, one of the things that I'm concerned about in uh, Jeffersonville is how to hire the people that are going to work in the plant. So I think there are some constraints, obviously, but overall, uh, I would expect significant growth in the battery uh, ecosystem in the region. Thank you. Oh. And Tim? Yeah, so when we look out <clears throat> across the biotech ecosystem, you know, we pull in people and we pull in groups both from a construction standpoint. So BHDP and Skanska have been great partners in Ohio that have helped us build out our facility. You know, but to supply the workforce, we've actually had to reach out up and down the innovation corridors. So working with Case Western Reserve, working with groups in Cincinnati and in Columbus to really build out the workforce, you know, you, know, you were also mentioning, like, where do we find a lot of those people? You know, it's, this is actually a chance to become a hub um, and using a lot of the resources within Ohio to help build that. I'm glad you asked that because that is another key supply is talent. We all talk about the talent shortage. So I'll ask Robert, you brought it up as well. How are you thinking about talent? Um, and I'm sure you really want it from Ohio versus importing it from any, anywhere else. Yeah, so we're, uh, we haven't even started hiring yet, but we have a very comprehensive HR development plan and recruiting plan. So we're starting to work with uh, many schools and municipalities in the area to start working on uh, community outreach, building a network, uh, and, and just having our uh, presence uh, be well known. So I think that's activity that we're involved in already. Of course, we're uh, also very dependent on Honda, who's our main partner here in the region. Honda's been very successful, um, have you know, multiple production facilities in the area, so we expect to be able to draw some people from Honda. Obviously, we don't want to hurt our partner, but you know, there's going to be, I think, a synergy there. And um, on the higher education side, uh, battery production um, is a little different from your traditional manufacturing. There's quite a lot of... Uh, um, engineers, technicians, skilled uh, employees who need to work the line. So we're starting to work with higher education um, entities as well here in Ohio as well as in the region to try to recruit and, and even uh, support some programs that are focused on uh, battery development. So it's multifaceted. We're really planning for the long run. I think immediately we depend on Honda quite a bit, but we're working on all of these dimensions so that we can 
make sure we get good people down the road. There's, I know there's lots of uh, university presidents here in the audience. I know all willing to help you out on that. And speaking of that, Jim, I know that Intel has um, invested a significant sum of dollars in terms of education and workforce. Can you share a little bit of that, how you're acquiring talent? Sure. I used to joke uh, with my team that anybody who has $20 billion can build a fab, right? And maybe there's only a couple companies that could do that. But it's the people that make the difference, and Governor DeWine talked about that. And so Intel realized that as we set foot into Ohio, we need a very talented workforce to do what we do. So we announced a $50 million over the next 10 years. First 17.7 .7 million of that went out to our partners in the Semiconductor Education, Education Research program, and so whether it's The Ohio State, or Bowling Green, or Miami University, or Columbus State, or Central Ohio Technical College, I think I got the university presidents in here, <laughs> um, they're gonna help support that workforce. Now there are, there are kind of our feeder, mm -hmm. but we know that we need to work on the feeder to the feeder. So we, our Intel Foundation partnership announced a, um, a million girls moonshot to get girls involved in STEM education so that they will have a great career in the future as well. That's awesome, that's really great. Yeah, and I'll draft on that. One of the things that Forge has is uh, She Forges executive training program and uh, coaching for women to try to help break through that 7% you know, threshold. You know, for Forge in particular, we had 10,000 applications you know, last year for jobs for about 150 jobs. We had 500 applications for intern positions this year for about 20. You know, there's a, there is a desire to move back and into Ohio. One of the things, again, I think coming out of the pandemic is you see this boomerang effect of people wanting to come back to sometimes their route. And we've had 25% relocation into Columbus alone. So the workforce is there when there's good jobs, there's good science, there's good groups that are you know, willing to That's, hire. Thank you. Thank you for your investment. That's really exciting. So, you know, the other big theme for today's conference is industry transformation. No sector is immune from disruption, whether it's from AI, machine learning. How do you leverage the constantly changing environment and advancements and still focus on growth? Tim? One of the things that uh, we'll be announcing soon is our automation lab. So when you start thinking about how do you um, test a lot of products, uh, if you can move something to a 24-7 type of shift, you can move release criteria a lot faster. So trying to find ways to help get things to our clients, but to also help them get them to patients faster. Great. Awesome. Jim? Yeah, so we're you know, really comfortable in the technology space. We're suppliers for that innovation, whether it's Xeon processors to do AI, machine learning, but we're also consumers for that same technology. As our process is advanced, it is able to learn and grow and, and, and really be able to use that same technology as well. So we're very, very comfortable in the innovation space. Cool. Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, for us, the industry itself is going through a significant transformation. So there's a lot of, uh, it's very dynamic. I would say the product itself is changing a lot. I mean, you hear about battery form factors and chemistry is changing quite a bit. So there's a, there's a lot of uh, changes in the marketplace. But I would say where um, we have been focused a lot recently on innovation is on manufacturing process. Um, you know, we talked about Industry 4.0, just in terms of using sensors, using artificial intelligence to do preventative uh, maintenance or preventative quality checks. Um, you know, for, for batteries, um, temperature and humidity conditions, very important. So just having um, a, a different level of awareness of the environment and uh, ability to control that. This is something that's really important for us to make sure that we, uh, we maintain quality. So uh, I would say industry itself is transforming for sure, but uh, for, for, for us, um, yeah, the manufacturing process, being able to have high yields, high um, you know, operating efficiency, this is really critical and what we're uh, really focused on. And I, I told, uh, you know, some of my colleagues are here, but I told my colleagues we have a lot of plants going up in the world, but our plant in Jeffersonville, it's going to be the benchmark plant globally. Why not? Right? It should be the best plant in the world, and that's certainly what we're shooting for. That's terrific. It's great to see you all at the forefront of this. So Ohio is home to amazing companies, many of which are in this room, um, and their economies, and our really strong universities are right here in Ohio as well. How can we help drive innovation and partnerships in each of your industries? Tim? Yeah, that's a fun question to answer. Uh, you know, science and biotechnology has really tried to push forward um, over the past few years, even again, uh, despite some of the not being able to work in person. 
But as we look out and trying to do more and more partnerships, we're forging these with, um, again, Case Western, groups in Cincinnati. It's the, how can you take more of these technologies to, to actually train a workforce? So we're actually trying to work and give grants to try to, try to do biotech boot camps, right? To try to do, um, you know, places where you can teach someone how to work within a clean room environment because you don't get a lot of that, you know, without some level of training. So when we think about how to bring people out of an academic center, it's can we help the academic center start, really start training? That's, a, that's very exciting. How about you, Robert? Um, so, I mean, I mentioned the uh, partnerships with both secondary and uh, university, so that's, that's important for us. I would say overall our experience with the, um, the county, the, the, the state, extremely, extremely supportive. I think uh, I had a chance to meet uh, Governor DeWine and Governor Houston uh, during our groundbreaking and very, very supportive of, of our environment and also in the Washington uh, courthouse area where the plant is. So, I would say the partnership's been really excellent, and, and we, all, of course, have hurdles to overcome, but I, I feel like the support is there. However, I would say, just from a selfish point of view, there are things that Ohio could do to really promote uh, this new industry that's happening, right? So you have large parts of the world, for example, where you can only get license plates for EVs, right? You can only park in certain spots if you have EVs. You can only drive in high-occupancy vehicle lanes with EV. So these are, in China, almost every city is doing this, and China is the lead market right now. I see this happening in other pockets, in par parts of Europe, parts of Asia. So I think to the extent that Ohio is becoming one of the epicenters for electrification and the battery uh, industry to be the lead market, we'd like to really push right, those type of initiatives as well, because when you have a lead market, this is where the innovation happens and you get learnings. Right? So I think we still have you know, our penetration rate in Ohio for EV is not that high right now. So I think, uh, you know, there are some things that we can do to promote at least this particular industry as well. Great advice. And Jim? Yeah, I'll say two things. One of the things that brought Intel to Ohio was the collaboration. You know, whether it was uh, uh, the governor's office, whether it was the city of New Albany, whether it was Jobs Ohio, and, and it, was, it all came together to get Intel here. And we have to continue that to make sure that, you know, all the people are prosperous and are be able to have the business climate. The second thing, if I go back to the semiconductor industry, is we do need to embrace that this industry of semiconductors is something we want in the U.S. We want to be able to bring that technology home. And I'm happy to compete, Intel's happy to compete, but we need to make sure we have a fair and equitable playing field. And so things like the CHIPS Act, I'm very proud that Ohio basically brought that across the line, uh, and it was both, have, both uh, sides of the aisle there. Yeah, just one additional comment, too. So there's been a big push um, for biomanufacturing, right? And mentioning Jobs Ohio and what was originally the Ohio Third Frontier, bringing a lot of that back from a government's perspective to help support the institutions, to help support the entrepreneurial spirit. You know, you heard that, I think, from Brandon in the talk before, that another way to help companies, you know, really try to bring out more talent. That's great. So you kind of might, the, la the final question is on a broader sense, and you've, uh, you've somewhat addressed it, but just with your thought leadership, how can Ohio continue to build on its strengths and maintain this position as an emerging leader in these innovative industries? What other steps can we take to ensure longer term growth and success? Anything new you want to add? More direct flights. <laughs> that, there you go. That's a novel idea. Anybody else? I mean, more direct flights. I like, I like that. <laughs> Jim? You know, I, I have a dream that one day America will get its preeminence back in semiconductors and that it starts here in the Silicon Heartland. So. Love it. And Robert, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I, uh, you know, I think bringing manufacturing back to America is actually, um, you know, we mentioned the CHIPS Act. We benefit from the IRA. Um, I would say... Um, you know, I grew up in Western Massachusetts, and there were many uh, light manufacturing uh, when I was a little kid, right? The um, United Technologies, there's, there was a lot of light industry. Paper industry was in Western Massachusetts. It's all gone now. There's no manufacturing in Western Massachusetts, and you can see the impact it has on the community, on the society. So for me, um, 
but the idea of bringing manufacturing back to America with leadership, right? I mean, we're, we're really trying to take leadership in, in batteries here. It's really quite meaningful, and I think that's what, uh, at least for myself and our team, uh, there's that extra sense of motivation that really, you know, uh, gets us up every, every morning. But, um, I mean, last thing I just want to say, I really appreciate being here in Columbus. People have been uh, incredibly receptive, and I just uh, uh, look forward to getting to know the community better and working, uh, you know, working together going forward. Thank you. I hope you all have the opportunity to uh, network and meet these gentlemen. I'm, most of us have met Jim and some of Tim as well, but this is an opportunity for you to get to know this incredible group of CEOs here in, in Ohio. And I want all of us to join in and thank uh, our great panel, Tim and Jim and Robert. Thank you all. Thank you.